Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look, a look at a small example here of how to find the contact forces on a particular structure. So let's say this is kind of like a support structure. Could be a bridge, could be a, a handle of a walkway or something like that. It's suspended between two support points. But notice on the left side, it's, it's firmly connected to the support point and here it's simply resting on top of the support point. And in this case, we can assume that there the friction is zero, that it's able to move. Now, this would be a situation where if things heat up and it expands, that there's room for expansion here, so this can slide back and forth. If you fix it between two points and the bridge expands, you're going to have a lot of stresses because of the thermal expansion. So you want to connect it firmly on one side and allow it to expand on the other side. Now, let's say that this object has weight. This would be the center of gravity, so let's call it C sub G. C sub G, the center of gravity, and so this would be the weight as if it's acting from the center of gravity of the entire structure. And on top of that, it's going to support some sort of forces. Let's say the forces are distributed evenly about the three points right there, but they're acting at an angle. So how would those supports, how would the two supports then act against the forces acting on them? Well, one thing we know is that the force F1, F2, and F3 will have both a horizontal and a vertical component. So we can imagine the horizontal component and the vertical component in each case of those three forces. And so you can then see that the sum of the force in the y direction, this component, this component, this component, plus the weight will be acting on both this point and this point. So let's call this point point A and let's call this point point B. So you can see then that there'll be compensating forces to support all that weight and the force is acting on the structure, so we know we're going to have some sort of force in this direction counteracting the vertical forces, and there's going to be some force in this direction compensating for the vertical forces. Now, for the horizontal forces, there's only one place where that can be compensated for. The left side, there's no way that there could be a, a horizontal force acting between the structure and the support. That means it all is resting on this side right here. That means there will be a horizontal force here. This horizontal force will be equal to the sum of these three horizontal forces over there. So here you can see that because of the type of supports that we have, we can then determine the type of contact forces that can exist. In this particular case, because it's attached, we'll have a vertical and a horizontal force. In this case, because it only supports the weight and will not offer any resistance to any motion of the beam because the thermal expansion left or right, there'll be no horizontal forces, so this will be only a reactionary force at point B. And that's how we go through the system and determine each of the contact forces that can exist. In this case, there is no rotational force, no couple, because this is a pin structure that holds it into place which will prevent any sort of translation of rotational motion to this pin. This pin will hold everything back and so we don't have any moments to consider in this particular case. And that's how we know how it's done.